Okay, and welcome back students who are taking math for business and finance and math applications. Um, we're working on the chapter 12 summary practice test. And um, as you saw from the previous videos for the drill problems and the word problems, it's pretty repetitive. So um, let's just get to it. Um, I will be using the tables and the uh, I know I'll I know I will be using the business math handbook table so if you haven't watched that video on it in the drill problem section you might want to watch that um, because I'm only going to be quoting the factor I'm not going to be looking it up um, showing you how I look it up on the screen all right but anyway um, problem number one let me get my pen here all right it says Lorna Ray owner of Starbucks franchise loaned 40000 to Lee Reese to help him open a new flower shop online. Lee plans to repay Lorna at the end of five years with 4% interest compounded semi-annually. Okay, so that's semi-annually. That's times two, twice uh, a year. How much will Lorna receive at the end of five years? So that's a future value. Wants to know how much at the end of five years. So my present value is uh, 40000 the, the term is five years, uh, and it's at 4% as the rate. So um, five years times two is 10 periods. 4% divided by two is 2%. Uh, and when I look up the uh, factor in the table, I'm looking at the 2% column for 10 periods, or 1.2190. So I have 1.2190 as the factor, and I'm multiplying that by 40,000, and I end up with $48,760 as the future value in five years. Simple, very repetitive. Okay, Joe Berry wants to attend Riverside College. Eight years from today, he will need 40000 so that's my future value. If Joe's bank pays 6% interest rate compounded semi-annually, what must Joe deposit today, a present value, to have uh, 50000 in eight years? Okay. Um, Let's see, eight years from today, he will need 40000 So that's not the future value. Okay. He um, wants, you know, he needs 40000 but he wants to have 50000 Okay. So the 50000 is the future value. So I take my time frame, which is eight years. And I multiply that by two, that gives me 16 periods at 6% interest. So I divide by two, that gives me 3%. And I look up on the present value table. Three percent for 16 periods. And I end up with 0.6232. So my factor is 0 0.6232, and I multiply it by the 50,000, and I end up with $31,160 as my present value. Okay, so that's what he must deposit today in order to have 50,000, right? Um, needing this uh, 40,000 here, again, when you're... Um, Remember, with word problems, you have information that is directly related, information that has nothing to do with a problem, and information that needs to be modified. This 40,000, all we need that for is a comparison. All right, it's not part of the problem. Okay? All right, uh, number three here. Kelly Shat, Shelley Katz deposited 30000 in a savings account at 5% interest compounded semi-annually. So that's a present value. That's a rate compounded semi-annually. At the beginning of year four, 
Okay, now notice what this says. It says, at the beginning of year four, Shelley deposits an additional 80,000. Okay, um, for, now I haven't been drawing the timelines for every single problem like I did with this one. I didn't draw the timeline. Um, mentally in my mind, you know, it's sitting up there. But whenever um, one of my variables changes, I always like to draw the timelines out so that I have an understanding of what's going on with the problem. So remember, you know, you have an interest rate, you have a number of periods, you have an amount, okay? If any of these kinds of things change, um, it's going to affect the problem, and I like to see it in my head. Um, and to see it in my head, I'm really drawing a timeline. So here we started out with 30,000, okay? And the interest rate is 5%. And we know it's compounded semi-annually. And then it says at the beginning of year four. Okay. So if this is the beginning of the beginning of year four, how many years have gone by? One, two, three years have gone by. Okay. So this period is only three years. Don't get caught thinking, oh, I'm going to look at four years as my time frame at this moment in time. Okay, If you use the four years, you're, you're going to be wrong here Okay, because only three years have passed. And that's why I like to draw the, the, the timelines because I can see what the beginning is and it allows me to see the number of periods. So I'm getting things straight in my head. So at the beginning of year four, she deposits an additional 80,000. So this is still the beginning of year four, and she's depositing and it plus $80,000 more. Okay. And that is also at 5% interest compounded semi-annually. Okay. So at the end of six years, so this is the end of six years, okay? So between the beginning of year four and the end of six years, how many years are there? Okay, three years. So that period of time is three years. So what has happened, right? Um, for the first uh, three years, we get to the end and we have a lump sum amount, okay, and then we're going to add the 80,000 to the lump sum amount, and we're going to go through the remaining three years and end up with a future value. So at the end of six years, what is the balance in Shelley's account? Right? So that's the way I see this in my head, okay, and that's important because, again, if you just automatically uh, just take the words and you just you sit here and you, you use the year four, you're going to be using the wrong factors. Okay, so let's work through the problem. Okay, I have three years times two. All right, that's six periods. And the five uh, percent divided by two is two and a half percent. And if you look at the chart for future value, <coughs> excuse me, you don't see a two and a half percent on this chart. So you have to use the business math handbook in order to find out what that factor is. So go back to that video if you don't know how to use it. Okay, but I'm only going to quote the factor here. I'm, you know, I already looked it up. And if you don't, you know, I'm warning you right now, go ahead and, and use the business math handbook and get accustomed to it because you're going to need it not just for uh, you know homework problems um, if if you when I tell you that this factor is um, 1.1597 and you say ah oh, Jim looked that up for me guaranteed when you have to go look it up yourself and you don't know what the ant how much it's supposed to be uh, you know there's a good chance that you're going to get it wrong so go ahead and look up that factor to make sure you arrive at the same thing I did and if you don't uh, and you don't understand why then you know telephone and speak with an instructor okay 
right? So we have our factor for that uh, period of time, and we're going to multiply that by the $30,000, and that's going to give us a lump sum of $34,791, okay? So that's our lump sum right here at the beginning of year four. Remember, that's principal and interest, okay? So we have the 34,791 as our lump sum at the beginning of year four, and now she's gonna add 80,000 more dollars to it. So our lump sum now becomes you know, uh, 114,791, okay? That's where we're at here at the beginning of year four when we add in the additional 80,000. Okay, and everything else uh, is still the same here. I mean, it's still at 5%. It's still um, for three year period and it's still compounded semi-annually. So I can, let me erase this. Um, I can use the same factor of 1.1597, okay, be, um, and do the multiplication and end up with um, $133,123.12 as the future value amount at the end of six years, okay? All right, let me uh, see if I can't erase a little bit of this and uh, kind of go over it again real quick. Just so, and if you understood that, then obviously um, go ahead and, uh, you know, pause it, you know, stop the video because um, that'll be the end of this here, all right? Actually, just let me erase it all here. If you understood it, go ahead and stop the video. If not, go ahead and watch a little bit more. I'm going to just quickly recap this uh, to give you that overview of it. Okay, so um, we have initial deposit of 30000 at 5% compounded semi-annually. But it says here at the beginning of year four. So that means this time frame is three years. And when we look up uh, look up the factor in order to know what this future value of this thirty thousand dollars is, right? The factor is one point one five nine seven, and we multiply that times the thirty thousand, and we ended up with thirty four thousand um, seven hundred ninety one dollars. Okay, so that's. $34,791 at the beginning of year four. But there was an additional $80,000 put in at the same interest rate and um, for the same number of years because this is the end of year six. Right? So that's three years. So we can take the 34791 and multiply it by the same factor of 1.591 on uh, 597, and we end up with $133,123.12 as the uh, future value at the end of year six. But the important thing about this particular problem is that any time that you have a change in one of the variables, whether it's your interest, your number of periods, or your amount, okay, I like to visualize by drawing my timeline and wherever I have a change, start a new timeline. Okay, so I draw a timeline. I have the change right here, okay, and I draw a new timeline. And then that allows me to know what I'm looking at because right here, okay, at the end of this timeline, I have this lump sum of 34,791, okay. And also by drawing the timeline, I was able to see that's the beginning of year th four, Okay. It's not the end of year four, so I know that it's a three-year period. And conversely, when I get to the end of year six over here, since this is the beginning of four and the end of six, I know I have three-year period in between here also. So I'm able to visually see everything that, that sits in place 
and I don't get myself confused in doing the math. Okay. So with that said, I will see you in, uh, in the next video for number four.